in 2002, yeah. uh, my uncle contacted me. My uncle lives in, in, in the States. Mm -hmm. and he was like, Ken, a kid has been brought over here. It's your kid. And back at the time, he was like, you know, you cannot go collecting kids. And it's like, I need to pay for them. And now this is now just too much. It's my kid. When did this kid come about? And I'm not aware that I have a kid. Uncle told me, my grandmother, your mom, grandmother is very frail. Here, yeah, this kid looks like you. Sent me pictures of the kid. I said, but there are a lot of people who can look like me. Who is the mother? You know, because this was years ago. And when she came to your, now she was coming to university. Yeah. I used to give Margaret money. She would cook all these dinners and, and just invite people to eat. And they would be like, she's the best cook, you know. And I'm, I'm not giving you money to go and <laughs> cook for everybody. <laughs> she will come around, you know. Oh, Margaret, I spent a lot. She, my dad, I don't have money anymore. What did you do? Oh, I cooked, I bought this, I bought that. She, she just had that in her. That drive in her. And as I was saying, you know, like creativity, like you're a very creative person. Yeah. No amount of money can pay you not to be creative. Yes. But your craft will pay you yeah. anyway. Yeah. And Margaret has that. I'm not creative, but Margaret is very creative. Mm. I'm so proud of Margaret. I think what she's done, you know, I wish, I was telling, you know, one of my Lawrence, a yeah. uh, friend of mine earlier, yeah. that a lot of Kenyans, a lot of us, probably not even you, not yes. even, yeah. a lot of us wish they knew what they would do earlier on in their life. Mm -hmm and executed it yes and not only that so many of us come to the uk but don't actually own businesses mm. at at her age when she was 26 27. A uh, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS The Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Guginau. I'm pretty sure a majority of you watched the story of Margaret. That would have been yesterday or the day before yesterday. But if you've not, these are the screenshots are running on your screen right now. And what struck me most was the fact that she found out about her dad years later. And even her dad finding out that he has a daughter, I'm not sure what that does you know to a man you spend your whole years and then all of a sudden one day someone tells you you have a daughter where do you start where does life take you from there and even as a young man how do you navigate i promised you i would try to talk to margaret's uh, dad and today we are about to have a, an in-depth conversation with him so that he can be able to take us through his journey finding out that he has a daughter what happened after and most importantly who is he even beyond margaret beyond all the other things in life who is he i'm about to let him introduce himself but before i do that guys you know what it is we are talking about high soul properties limited i love that now you are more aware of them we've been having them here on our conversations and i always say if i'm sitting on this chair it's a credible product i'm not going to put my brand on the line and just come and talk to you about anyone so if you are looking to get a plot of land somewhere or even get someone to develop you that piece of land then you might want to check out high soap properties limited they were voted the best real estate company 2022 so i only bring you the best of the best and maybe also later on dad will talk to us about investing back home and what are the do's and don'ts especially if you are living here in diaspora our uk tour continues and i have to thank our incredible host here this is our second last we have three more days left here and lydia tet olet has been nothing but amazing so wherever she is lydia tet olet thank you so much for being an incredible host and for loving us and my team and let Letting us continue impacting, you know, the society one story at a time. And of course, for you who is watching, 
for being an incredible supporter of our network. If you are watching this without having subscribed, you are doing a great disservice to our channel. Hit that subscription box. Let's continue bringing you these impactful stories. And now from Canary Wolf, allow me to let my guest introduce himself. Hello. Uh, hello, Lee. How, how are you? I'm all right. Uku mkuangi na watu wamejisai kivo. Uku ni kazi tu. How na watu wamejisai kivo. Uh, 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 yes, how are you, sir? I'm very well. Indeed. Looking amazing. You too. Really? Yeah, like, I, you know, I had to try and match your outfit. I was like, no way I'm hosting him without my kakot. So if you've seen this se in, on several shows, no, I had to bring it back for this conversation. But karibu sana. Asante sana. Nice to finally have you on the show. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Last yeah. year we came here and we had a conversation. Indeed. And I was like, one day. One day we will yeah. sit and have this conversation. Yeah. So um, thanks first even for wanting to have it with me. I don't take it for granted. But before we can even dig any deeper, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Kennedy Small. Mm -hmm. Kennedy Buire Small, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, Buire is my, my, my name. I was born... In, the evening, so yeah. Oh, Buire Buire. Is evening. evening yeah. and morning. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, and called. small. Small was my grandfather's name. Really. Well, I think we are the only smalls in Kenya. We are so many of us. Yeah. Yeah. Is it small for small? Like no. Yeah. All of them are incredibly tall. Yeah. But the spelling is like, because I thought even why they call Margaret Small, it's because she's a bit petty. That's her real no, name. No, that's her real name. Oh. My grandfather was called Michael Small. Mm. My dad was called Frederick Small. Yeah. My uncle in the United States called Eusebia Small. We are so many of us. Yes. Loads, because he was polygamous. So. Okay. He had loads of us. Loads of you. And uh, yeah, we're so many Smalls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long have you been in the UK? Uh... 27 years, I guess, you know, 1995 yeah. to today's 27 years. Those are so many years. Indeed. What do you love most about this country? Everything works. The systems work. Everything works. Uh, yeah, you know, the systems just work. Yeah. Which I don't really see. Back home. Yeah. Because mm. if I want to get a train, like probably you've taken trains of it, yes. look on your phone, it's coming at this time. It just works. Yeah. yeah. There's no excuses. Nah, no excuses. Yeah. No. Yeah. Things work. Things work. And uh, as I was saying earlier in my introduction, I had the privilege of hosting your daughter. Yes. Such an amazing kitchen. Thank you. She, uh, you know, I ate there last year. Yeah. And she set this beautiful table for me and my team. And we were not even there for a story last yeah. year. We had just come to pay a courtesy call. Yes. And she made this beautiful food for us you know but as we were doing her story what was going through your mind because you were right there i was just very proud of her uh, indeed from and she acknowledges where she's come from mm. and uh, that was really really proud moment as mm -hmm. a dad mm -hmm. and thank you for uh, taking her there and uh, really allowing her to talk yeah. about her life yeah yeah. Do you think it's something she needed to speak out? I think it, she did. And yeah. I talked to her uh, later on and yeah. she was like, she hasn't talked about it for such a long time when she was going through therapy, but mm. you got something out of her. that. Yeah. And I told her now this is, this is it. It's going to be available for your kids and yes. whatever is, yeah. is there and it will inspire somebody else probably not doing something differently from what you know, mm -hmm. uh, how yeah. would you define her? Margaret is, I'm so very proud of her. She, she's perfectionist. Margaret will leave probably work at midnight and continue to look at food, how she can perfect it. Just get a little bit. You probably, uh, you describe how did you find the, 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 the presentation of your food? Beautiful. And that's her creation. Mm. How can she present it this way? Yeah. yeah, must be a proud moment for you as a dad. I am indeed. Yeah. I am indeed. I'm so proud of Margaret. I think what she's done, you know, I wish I was telling, you know, one of my Lawrence, a yeah. uh, friend of mine earlier, yeah. that a lot of Kenyans, a lot of us, probably not even you, not yes. even yeah. a lot of us 
wish they knew what they would do earlier on in their life mm -hmm. and executed it. Yes. And not only that, so many of us come to the UK but don't actually own businesses mm -hmm. at, at her age when she was 26, 27 to have a restaurant. How? And manage it. And manage it. And have as. people come from different places of the world just to taste her food. Exactly. And have a team work for her mm. to manage the team. Because yes. she does all that. And she teaches them too. Exactly. But as a dad, you were also supposed to be those dads that would say there's no career here. Why can't you go do medicine? Go. I have nothing against doctors or lawyers or anything. But for us, from an African perspective, that is what we grew up knowing works. You know, you would be in a house and if none of you is a doctor, none of you is a lawyer. Personally, in my house, none of us is, you know. But then my neighbor used to practice. She was studying law. And for some reason, everyone in the plot would make that look like that was the most, Indeed. you know. Yeah, so for you as a dad, what what made you encourage her to become that version of herself and show her this career in what you're doing and these two can work? Uh, it's, uh, it's incredible that you even mentioned that because I have uh, one of my relatives told Margaret that um, couldn't you do anything better because one of my daughters, Christine, yeah. she wants to be a lawyer and just like, could be there's a better career and this, you know, and I told Mag Margaret was crying and I was like, Mar, don't worry, don't worry, it will be okay, you know, yeah. do whatever, whatever makes you happy and whatever you pursue your creativity yeah. and do it. Yeah. And 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 I've always supported Margaret and even my other daughter, I always support, mm. you know, because figure out education you know being lawyers and doctors is not everything you cannot just do what you're good at yes. you know we all have a gift earlier on we just don't quite know how it manifests mm -hmm. later on in life mm -hmm. and margaret she started cooking early at university she would cook yeah so she had a mood mood a, a mood board where she said you know fitness food and uh travel yeah and she's achieved all those things. Yeah. How many of us do that? Not many. Not many. And let's dig deeper because I know yours is not just a normal dad-daughter story. This is someone who came into your life really later on, you know. 100%. This is someone who was presented to you and you had no idea you were someone's father. Yes. So before we get to that part, could we know a bit about you? Like where do you come from? How you ended up here? And at what particular moment were these news uh, broken to you? Um, so I was much like Margaret, actually, yeah. like... My father and mother were, you know, had me when they were young. Yeah. Exactly, more or less the same age, you know, probably earlier. And then mother abandoned me, father abandoned me, and I, my grandmother brought me up. Um, my hammer, but mother fled yeah. the day I was born. I had never breastfed, so she, she left. Your mother fled the day you were born? Yes, yes. And she left. And so my grandmother brought me up, her mom, but I, when I was uh, like nine, ten, I was told I don't belong there from the other village because it was not very far. So um, my uncle told me I need to leave. So I left and I went to my grandmother. They told me, you buy my body pad. That's where you belong. That's, and I went there and was this tall, elegant, beautiful woman. And she like, I know who you are. You're welcome to stay here. And we stayed, and I went to the local school, mm. finished. I didn't have uh, uh, enough money for school fees. My auntie, my grandmother told my auntie who lived in Nairobi, you know, could you take this kid? Uh, in 1988, I finished. 1989, I went to Nairobi, and uh, I, didn't have, I didn't go to school, even though I did very well at school. But I stayed, I mm. helped around the chores at home. But uh, I went, there was a, um, a monastery called St. Benedict's, yeah. 
uh, in along Dika Road, just opposite to Talib. I know it. You know it. Uh, yeah, that was we used to go to that church. Is it? Yeah, you know the church. Yeah, then Saint Benedict. Yeah, then yeah. there's also a clinic. Yeah, Afokando. Yeah. yeah. We used to I go there. Up, I was in the end of actually for a year before I came. From, that's the place I before I came to London. Yeah. Yeah. I was a priest, you know. I was a priest. Kid you me. I'm not joking. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I was in the end of I went over there. And, um, but this, 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 um, my auntie used to work for Kenya Power and Lighting, which is just over near Madari. Yes. Eh? And um, I went, there was a priest over there called... Mm -hmm. Um, who took me in mm -hmm. and uh, paid my school fees and I went to this school in the village for two years because I had missed out a year, remember? Yeah. So, and uh, they told me like in a race there are three winners. You can either be, uh, have gold, silver or bronze. If yes. you, if, and in, back home we normally have exams, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, two, three. Yeah. If you don't come, if you come forth, the school fees will not mm -hmm. be paid. Mm -hmm. So it was like I had to compete and yeah. really be good. And yeah. I think also I enjoy reading. So, you know, I, I absorb information mm -hmm. a lot faster, mm -hmm. which is not for everybody, yeah. but I do. Yeah. So I, I, I took the challenge and I never got less than three, number three. Wow. So, and then after two years, I went to Nairobi and they took me to Meru. Uh, you know, two more years mm -hmm. over there from four. So. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, but I met Margaret's mom at the school in the village. Yes. The last day, you know, we were teenagers. So I happened and I left, went to Nairobi, went to a school in Graffins and Graffins College is in uh, Westlands. Mm. And, um, and I was doing an, a, a, a revising in a, a library called Macmillan downtown. Yeah. Nigeria. Yes, I know it. Yeah. So I was telling Lawrence, there was this white guy who was waving, excuse me, excuse me, while we were reading. It's like, if any of you want to go to England, you'll go over there and um, come back. You'll have good jobs back home. If you want to apply, here's a form and we filled in and just bring your exam transcripts. So I brought my exam, exam uh, transcript and three weeks later, I got a letter that I had been invited to Greenwich University in London. Oh, so I could find just them. like that. But nobody wanted to come to England back then. Why? I didn't, we didn't need visas to come here. We didn't need anything, you know. Back really? in the day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, nobody wanted to, be, to come here. The life you find over here wasn't what it is today at all. I never saw... A person of my color, you know, like there was one guy, a black man called uh, Trevor McDonald, who was yes. on television. Yeah. You couldn't kind of like have news where like, nah, I never saw anyone, a black person working in an office. No, when I came, no. Yeah. No, I didn't know anyone who wanted to come here. People used to come over here and go back. Not stay here. Nah, nah. You want to do cleaning the rest of your life? Mm. Or security jobs? Mm -mm. No, work in hotels? Nah or petrol stations. No. Mm. So I didn't see anyone who wanted to be here. Yeah. So that's how, you know, so I did and I came over here and with one way ticket, first of all, because I was coming to study for three years. So you can't buy a ticket that is open for three years. Yes. So I had a one way ticket. Yeah. And then buy another one when I'm going home. And you landed. I came here, you know, uh, did uh, you know had this guy that is so so important to mm -hmm. me called father robert mm -hmm. at the monastery uh, saint benedict's who encouraged me to come to england yeah he was like you can do it just go what are you doing here you've got no family here you got go you'll work over there because he knew some you know he told me you'll go to england work and um, start Safe. a life yes you figure it out mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody in London, not even a single soul. Mm -hmm. Imagine, you know, going to a foreign place. But we, we made it work. Mm. So you just landed straight at uni? I arrived at Heathrow and uh, the waited, went to the university. Mm. And I went to a dorm and I had 105 pounds. And I remember he said, 
you know, when you buy coffee, it used to be 105, and you'll think that it's 105, so I didn't even buy anything. <laughs> So you don't and a, I had a hundred and five. You're like, no, my money is not going like that. This place is a damn <laughs> expensive. So yeah, it was really difficult. Yeah. Really difficult. Uh -huh. And I didn't even have warm clothes and it was you winter. know, back in October, winter time, you know. So uh, Father Robert had given me his suit and I was wearing a suit on the aeroplane, you know. It's, I look back and things so I just kind of like, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But it was so cold over here. But uh, anyway, we made it work. Yeah. And I, I was just determined to make things work, mm -hmm. you know, so. How were the years that followed? Tough, 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 tough. Hey, yeah, looking back, because I was to pay my own school fees at university, I didn't have enough. I used to work, but I used to work at a petrol station where I would put a bucket of cold water because I was working at night. I got a job at night. I put a bucket of cold water, put my feet inside, do my homework, and I bet I went back to university and I had done all my homework. And a lot of people who didn't have to go through that hadn't done their homework. So I did that and it was so cold, you know, because, you know, working and, because if, because I knew if I'm working at night, I'll sleep if I don't put my feet in the bucket. Yeah. You know, so because naturally it's at night mm -hmm. and I have to work till early in the morning. Yeah. Then I'll go to another job where I have to stack shelves, mm -hmm. then go to uni. Mm -hmm. Come around, sleep for four hours. Yeah. Do it all over again to pay my school fees. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, it was tough. It was tough. But um, I guess, you know, life. Uh, a lot of us who go through so much like that, we appreciate so much, you know. I appreciate, I, I appreciate that I went through all that because it made me the person I am today, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you look back and you appreciate the oh, moments. Yeah. I can assure if your life is so smooth and you don't have a lot mm. of ups and downs, you, you know, when you get those ups and downs, probably you don't really, you can't figure out yes. how to get out of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and had you started making friends? Was racism a thing? Why you, oh, did tough. you feel segregated? So when I came, I lived in a place, you know, called Paddington. And yeah. there was, I had never, there was not even a single black person around there. Uh, you know, to go to have a haircut, I grew my hair was so long because I didn't have any person, I, you know. And then eventually I went to have my haircut and it was done by a white person and it was terrible. I had to go to, I found another person because the school I went to had a lot of black people. Yeah. And especially Kenyans mm -hmm. who came around the same time. There's mm -hmm. some who came exact same day, yes. day that I did. Yeah. And they told me there's another place you know, to go and have a, a haircut mm -hmm. near Arsenal Football Club. Mm -hmm. So I would go over there and, yeah. uh, you know, which is a long distance from where I lived. Had a haircut over there and, mm. yeah, and I made friends and that's, they became really good friends because we used to hang out on Sundays yeah. in the afternoon when mm -hmm. I'm not working. Mm -hmm. So it was good. It was good. Yeah, yeah. it was good, but uh, tough because not knowing you know, rent is expensive, food is expensive, transport is expensive. University school fees has to be paid. It was damn difficult. Damn, did any relatives asking I, about you? No, do you know, incidentally, <laughs> nobody actually asked me about me. Um, my uncle actually was really good. He got in touch because he went to United States in 1996. Yeah. A year later yeah. and got in touch with me but when i left my uh, auntie i was just i was always on my own i've always been on my own mm. but um i had father robert in from Bet the monastery mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine called paul he's mm -hmm. a doctor now in kenya oh. dr paul yeah. paul wekes a good mm -hmm. friend of mine mm -hmm. And we do things, we do go to holidays together, even like we plan to go to Las Vegas yes. together. We always go together. Together. He's mm. been like my younger brother that I never had. Mm. And so. How are you dealing with the loneliness? Hey, it was tough. But 
see, I was so focused on what, you know. You didn't, uh, looking back, I was so lonely. I used to tell Father Robert, I need to come home. He's like, unaku, unaenda wapi? Unakujia nini ugu? Uwezi kujia kwa monastery. Utaenda wapi? You know. Yeah. But it did go, work out yeah. better. Did you get a job after uni? Yes, I did. After uni, I got a job. Uh, <laughs> that was actually tough. Because yeah. after after uni, I got a job working for us. Um, uh, they said there are supermarkets called Tesco. You've yes, seen Tesco. Yes, so yes. I used to, and boots where you buy medicine. I used to stack shelves. Stacking shelves and, a boot, and a Tesco working in the... Uh, vegetable section. Mm -hmm. So we we on a skuma wiki, mm. put it on the shelf. Yeah. But one time I just woke up and this is not what I want to do. Because mm -hmm. in life you have to make that kind of radical change, you know. Is this what you want to do? So I decided that one time I just said, I'm not going to do it. This is not for I'm me. I'm not going to do it. Mm. And uh, I went to um, uh, this place, a job recruitment, a recruitment center, because we were allowed after I finished uni, we were mm -hmm. allowed to stay here for one year. Yeah. Free. And mm -hmm. then, so I went to this job center and they sent me to a job in the morning, which was five o'clock in the morning. Back in the day, you used to have newspapers. You have to yeah. um, say lean news, uh, news agents, once 10 newspapers, I punch in the computer. It comes to you mm. and another person, yeah. you know. And a job was advertised at this very place for a credit controller. Uh, somebody's just chasing dates, you mm. know, so you haven't paid your dates. I can write a letter, give you a call. Yes. And I applied and this lady, because Miss Lynn told me, uh, bring your transcripts, university transcripts. And I brought and she's like, Oh, have you ever considered a job as an accountant? Uh, accounting is, you passed all this, you know. I said, no. You know, said, we'll uh, go to this place training. Mm -hmm. we'll do First of all, she told me to, to apply for the job. I apply, went for the job interview and I got yes. it. It's my first job mm -hmm. of, of kind of like thinking differently because mm -hmm. I had never thought. I'm an accountant, yes. the way I told you, you know. So I hadn't thought like that. So I got to this place. She told me to train as an accountant. I got the job, started training wow. as an accountant. Wow. I, then I joined another company and mm. um, an accountancy firm that paid my school fees, wow. my fees to train as an accountant wow. now. They pay for it. You work, you get paid less, but, but the, you go to college. Yes. In the evenings after mm -hmm. work, you got to go to college and then they will guide you. You need to pass your exams. Okay. And yeah. you did? I did. Yeah. And there was a new government also, a labor government that said, if you've been here for four years, you have you can apply to leave for a right to stay. And that's how I did. You applied hmm. and you got it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And I stayed. And you stayed. Yeah. Let's talk now life in the UK, stability. You know, you are moving on swiftly. By the time you learned about Margaret, at what stage of your life were you in? So, <laughs> this is incredible. So, in 2002, yeah. uh, my uncle contacted me. My uncle lives in, in the States. Mm -hmm. and he was like, Ken, a kid has been brought over here. That's your kid. And back at the time, it was like, you know, you cannot go collecting kids. And it's like, I need to pay for them. And now this is now just too much. It's my kid. When did this kid come about? And <laughs> I'm not aware that I have a kid. Uncle told me, my grandmother, your mom, grandmother is very frail here. This kid looks like you. Sent me pictures of the kid. I said, but there are a lot of people who can look like me. Who is the mother? You know, because this was years ago. Remember, I, I left Kenya in 1995. Margaret was born in 1992. I lived in Kenya for three years. Nobody told me that I had a kid. Seven years after that, I live in England. And then you come around after 10 years that I'm a father to somebody. I don't quite think that I lean you live and think that, I, yeah, let me just accept it. No. So I, I denied, yeah, I denied that. You rejected uh, her? 
Of course, of course. But how? How is it possible, really, that you somebody could tell you that you have a kid that you didn't know? You, you wouldn't accept it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they went to call her and, yeah, we just bonded and I was like, because I never had a dad, I never had a mom and I was like, you know what, yeah, you'll come and live with me. Now, you know, you're, my grandmother was like, this is your kid, you gotta, you got to take this kid. Yeah. So, and Margaret actually is the one who made me go back to Kenya. I would never have gone to Kenya, probably, because after I left Kenya, I went to Kenya after 14 years. Why had you never come back? Uh, you know, because when I left, you know, I was living in a monastery. I remember I told yes, you I was yes, living in a monastery. monastery. So where was I going to go? You didn't have pretty, like, family. I had my auntie lived in, yes. who lived in Rongai, you but, know, but she had her family, you mm. know, who brought me from the village. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't going to go and start living with her again after I live here. And mm. I didn't just get that kind of exposure. So I decided I will live in England. Make it a home. Make it a home. I mm. bought my, I created my own home here. Mm. How was that interaction like the first time you bumped into her in school? Did you know this is her? Was there anything in your heart? Because she didn't know. You know, she didn't even know she, you were, she was the one you were looking for. Yeah, exactly. But for you, did you have that gut feeling like, this is her, this is my daughter? Initially, when she, I didn't, you mm. know, but then I told the school that I'm here for this person. Yes. And they called her. We just had that bond and Margaret wouldn't leave me. She was like, and you know, I used to go to Kenya for probably... I had never been to Kenya for so many years, yeah. but I went, I would go for Friday. Yeah. I arrive in Nairobi on a, a early morning plane on Friday, mm -hmm. leave on the night plane on Sunday, go to work in the morning. About five times, you know, every, every, once a month I will go over there, just spend some time with her and yeah. Because we just created a bond and I was like, okay, she has to come and live with me in London. Yeah. yeah. But what questions are you asking yourself as a man? Any recollection of her mom? Can you even remember when you guys met? Are you not bitter that this was kept away from you? What questions were you asking yourself? I asked, indeed, I asked those questions. So, for example, you know, I didn't know who the mom was. So I was told who the mom was. My friend also told me we were together on this very day, because they are twins. So he, he took the other twin, and I took the other twin. Hey, that night. Hey, that night. But yeah, I act what I'm told yes. now. So um, told me about it. And we just, yeah, I, I met the mom later on, mm. and, you know, she, for her to give me consent to, mm -hmm. have, uh, to have Margaret, she yeah. came to my house. And it's because of Margaret that I actually I built a house back home. Wow. Because, uh, yeah, um, when my father gave me the land, I built a house. Yeah. But what's the mom telling you? What, what she, did she, she tell me that, you um, why she didn't say anything? Yeah, she told me that we were so young, so she fled because it was kind of addressing an issue right now. She was very young. She left. I was very young. She didn't know where I was. Yeah, but my grandfather has two homes. Yes. So there was a home that was close to where Margaret's mom lived, mm -hmm. and there's another one very far where it's not, it's far mm -hmm. where where I come yeah. from. Now. Yeah. But because they knew the name Small, mm -hmm. we are the only Smalls. You can't miss us even. Yes. Yeah. So she was told, you know, I think your father belongs to this place, mm -hmm. and so they brought the whole family from her side, brought her to my family mm -hmm. and my. I was contacted and I just did what everybody, you know, once I knew that this is my kid, I never had a dad who could take care of me. And, you know, I cannot leave this kid to my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So everybody, you know, just remember, everybody in the village, everybody knows this is my kid. How are you going to turn around and say you're not going to help your kid? You live in England. But you don't have you don't help your own kid who is mm -hmm. suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, Were uh, you ready for fatherhood? Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Because I was already a father here. Really? I had another daughter yeah. uh, who was already one year in 2001 mm -hmm. called Christine. She mm -hmm. was already one year. Yeah. So, you know, this was, this was complicated. I didn't quite know how, yeah. you know, I could navigate that. Mm. But yeah. How was that like for her? I had already prepared her that, yeah. Because mm. when the phone call came from Kenya, I was at home, you know, I was like, Uko na mtoto nyumbani. She was there, so, you know. So, shtuki peke yako. Yeah. You have no. to explain them shtuko. I do it pamoja. <laughs> <laughs> and you explained. No, explanation, you have a voice, you know, si unaona la like speaker for mm. Yeah, uko na mtoto hapa hivi, this is what it is, yeah. Hey. So, it wasn't that I needed to explain anything, you know. It so. was already explained. Uncle Sebi explained very well. Matter yeah. of fact, after that, we bought a ticket. I was the British Embassy, you mm. know, assured me that I'm going to go with Margaret. To, I just need to come around and do a, sign some document. Yes. I went over there, but so I bought tickets to go to America, like Margaret said. Margaret's ticket was also on it. I lost the money anyway. I didn't, because I had already paid for the plane ticket yeah. to go to America. Yeah. But she was denied, you know, so yeah. she didn't come. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a man, where, what do you think? Because I'm just assuming, like now, how many people don't even know they have kids out there? And it's good not to know, but once you know, you ought to do something about it. It's good not to know? No, if you don't know, well, how are you going to ask a man go looking that, do I have a kid over there? Does this one look like me or not? Yeah, it looks <laughs> like me. No, no. Yes. But if you are told, yeah, because remember, if you are told, you have to do something about it. What I mean, you know, if you're not told, you know, it's not up to you to go and look, you know, do I have a kid? But mm. if someone tells you, you know, this is your kid, yes. don't... In, initially, I mean, it depends on the circumstances. Yeah. A lot of people told me, Ken, you're stupid to go and look for, but I think it's the best decision that I've ever made. Oh, you're proud of it. Oh, I'm so proud of uh, what the decision I made. Yeah. What happened to her mom? Her mom? Yeah, no, we left her, but she passed... Uh, few years later she passed oh yeah then she was just with you now margaret you know she, margaret came uh, i think three years later her mom passed uh -huh. when she was living in england yeah oh, already yeah. when she was living here yeah 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 to talk to me about the connection between her and grandma because i felt like there was a huge part of her with her grandmother what talk to me about that part my grandmother was amazing a really, really beautiful uh, woman who took me in and took Margaret in mm. and told Margaret, because Margaret didn't know about me. It's like, you have your dad. Your dad lives in England. He, in fact, he, he will take you on an aeroplane. And Margaret was like, this man is, who is this man? You know, nobody ever told me about your mm. dad. And mm. um, she taught Margaret, she would spend time with Margaret in the kitchen uh, enabled Margaret to develop her passion for cooking. So when Mar when she passed, Margaret was, oh God, he, she went in some dark place, mm. you know, that I hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, Grandma was so, so connected with Margaret mm -hmm. and she's like everything. Margaret, I remember, you know, I went to, um, uh, I told Margaret, let's we're going to Egypt for holidays, Shamel yeah. Sheikh. Yeah. Margaret said, I'm going home. I'm going to uh, I want to go to my grandma. And she went and stayed in Kenya for three months before going to university and learned cooking in the village. She was like, That's I'm going home. I'm going there. Is, is it okay if I go to Kenya instead? That's how connected she was. And in she just land. stayed with my grandmother in the village. Mm. And learned cooking. Learned cooking. Improved on the skill. And when she came to your, now she was coming to university, yeah. I used to give Margaret money. She would cook all these dinners and, and just invite people to eat. And they would be like, she's the best cook, you know. And I'm, I'm not giving you money to go and <laughs> cook for everybody. <laughs> she'll come around, you know. Oh, Margaret, I spent a lot. She'd, Dad, I don't have money anymore. What did you do? Oh, I cooked, I bought this, I bought that. She she just had that in her. That drive in her. And as I was saying, you know, like creativity, like you're a very creative person. Yeah. No amount of money can pay you not to be creative. Yes. But your craft will pay you yeah. anyway. Yeah. 
and Margaret has that. I'm not creative, but Margaret is very creative. Mm. You know, like right now, probably at home, she's looking at how to perfect her dishes, how to make it better. What kind of food can she add? Yes. You know, that's what it is. Mm. And it's just passion. Mm. And I'm, I've never seen somebody, I've told her, Margaret, you know, what you have, I, was, I wish I was like that at your age, 26. Oh, yeah. She used to sell food in gyms, you know. She'll be, Dad, if you eat this food, it will make you like this. And I eat the food and yeah. I go to the gym, I yes. pump iron and it yes. feels good. Yeah. It's like, you know, eat this kind of, you know, salmon, yeah. chicken breast. She makes it for me and, and broccoli and mm. stuff. So Margaret has always been passionate and she started studying nutrition. Mm. If you eat this food, you cut weight, you do hey, this. Hey. Yeah. Okay. And now I started eating as well, you know, and started seeing my body change, mm. you know. When I go to the gym and I, you know, work out, I feel good, you know. And you feel good even yeah. here? Mentally, feel good. So mm. we'll go to the gym to, you know, I'll sign up. You know, so Margaret will go early in the morning before yes. she goes to work. Even yes. tomorrow morning, Margaret will be in the gym early in the morning. And then go to the spa, come around. Your uh, health is your wealth, so there's no way around it. Mm -hmm. All the money you have, if you don't have good health, yes. you'll spend it on, on health, yeah. getting better. But you have to eat well. Mm. And food is a very important component of your health. Yeah. How, how how do you spend your time of work? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I like a lot of things. Yes. I enjoy, I, I used to play football so from a very, very young age back home. I used to play football, played to the provisional level. I used to be quite okay. Mm. But all the time someone tells you, Soma Vitabu, you yes. know, where you're wasting time in a full football. And then um, over here, I like, uh, gym a lot. I gym a lot. I not a lot, mm. you know, but I go to the gym at least five yeah. times a week. Yeah. I do boxing as well. I like boxing. And I used to do golf, but I hurt my shoulder. Oh, sorry. But I like exercises. You like exercise? Yeah. So who gets it from who? Who gets the No, wolf? Margaret gets it from me. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I'm the one who told her, you know, we're going gym. Even golf. Margaret is a good golfer as well. Yes. She play, she's got a good swing. She's mm. got good golf. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, so sport, like exercises, mm -hmm. she got it from me. She got it 100%. from me. 100%. Let me ask from a man's perspective, yeah. because I know a lot of men will watch this and obviously they resonate, right? But for you as a man, when you are going through all the things you are going through, who would you talk to? Because I don't think it's easy someone coming into your life and then being told you know you have a kid you're not a stone you're breaking as a human being as well and you're asking yourself a lot of questions right so who are you talking to when you are going through all this and did it ever affect you oh a lot it affected me so there's uh, this priest called father robert yes father robert without father robert i wouldn't be in england first of all uh he was in the monastery of saint benedict's yeah. and he truly truly encouraged me he was like go don't have any fears a lot of people go to england they get an education and come back so when i was told that i had margaret yeah. i talked to her, to him and he said um ken you know you never had you're like my child this kid is a blessing take this kid and i, I would talk to to him about margaret and margaret was also communicating they would write letters and send she would write letters, you know, back in the day it was writing, write, send pictures, you take pictures at school, send. And Father Robert told me, I've helped you, not because I want anything from you, but make a difference in others. And now you've got an opportunity, you've got a kid, mm. what better way to make, make that difference? Mm. And, and I'm so, so, so pleased that mm. it manifested the yeah. way it has. Yeah. How do you guys bond? So, first of all, I was saying, Margaret had, um, when she came to England, because I didn't quite know how to bond with her, because she was 14, and 
I asked her, you know, because her English wasn't quite good. Yes. Um, I told Margaret, what can I do for you? Um, what do you like? Mm. She told me she likes dancing. I said, okay. I looked around and, in fact, there was a dancing school. Margaret is a very good dancer. Yeah. She can dance, you know, like hip hop. Uh, she can do ball dancing, ballroom dancing. She's very good. She mm. won a lot of certificate yes. awards for dancing. So I told her, in return, what I want you to do is within six months, you need to speak English. I bought her uh, a headphone and used to have this bite-sized BBC English. Yes, yes. Listen on news. Look at the, the, the way somebody speaks, the mm, mouth mm, as it moves. Mm. Uh, and, and write notes. And she did that. Wow. Remember, she, she's come to a completely new setup. Different. New school. She doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And every week, she goes dancing. Yeah. She comes. Yeah. And it's like, Dad, oh. we are performing this week. Mm -hmm. Come around. Yes. She dances. She had a lot of joy in mm. dancing. There's something about music. And you're, you're creative. There's something about music and, you know, gets you to some place. And Margaret had it. She danced and she could memorize a lot of mm. things. And in return, she did what I expected her to do. to do. And remember, Margaret went past her all her exams, yes. went to university to do education. She has passion in children, you know, early years. A lot of kids who were born here didn't even get the grades needed to go to university, but Margaret did. Wow. And she passed very well, mm -hmm. you know. And she got a job. She was a teacher. Yeah. And she used to do teaching. She would do cooking mm -hmm. and sell food to gyms and online. Yeah. If you want, you're a busy person, you're working, you'll have meal plans. Mm. Five meals a week yes. for 67 pounds, 65 pounds for the week, five meals. And um, delivered twice a week. And people just on Instagram, because I'm not on social media, yes, yes. so I'm not on social media. Mm -hmm. She is because of this. Mm. And she just got traction. and Yeah, people yeah. loved her food. Uh, yeah, and she yeah. was doing like healthy meal plans. Mm. Salmon, chicken, yeah. broccoli, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, what do you feel about Kenya Kitchen? Oh, so proud. I think I was telling my, it's the proudest moment, because you see, a lot of us, as I said, Margaret has achieved a lot that a younger me had never achieved. Yeah. And a lot of people in, you know, in England mm -hmm. or anywhere mm -hmm. to come over here, yeah. to have a setup like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you come around, you've seen there's a team, there's a whole team. Yes. It's, and a lot of us actually in Kenya, anywhere around the world, don't have a system that works. Yes. Margaret was in Italy not so long ago. But the system works. She's set up, you know, where, like, she will know how much money she's taken mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. She will know because in the background she can see. Everything. So she has people working. There's a manager there yes. who makes operations easier. Easier. Margaret doesn't have to. And now, I mean, probably use, you know, right now Margaret probably is at the front. She doesn't actually do the cooking behind mm. because she oversees the cooking, but she, she doesn't yes. do it. And, yes. But she will prepare dishes and say, mm. this is how I want the dish to come mm. out, as it should be. Because if she's in the kitchen all the time, she cannot grow that business. True. Over the weekends, you cannot get a table at the kitchen, like uh, you know, on Saturday, Sundays, mm. in Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays is just extremely busy. You turns people away. It's done. Done. Because it's a small restaurant, yes. as you saw. It's yeah. small. But, yeah, uh, I'm so very proud. She said quality over quantity. 100%. Quality over quantity. It's how she does the skooma for me. How is she going <laughs> to do that with skooma, you know? Yeah. And then put a kachili there yeah, on exactly. top. It's beautiful presentation. It's yeah. beautiful presentation. Why, why is, was it important for you to support her even financially in that business? See, 
Um, many times, a lot of us parents tend mm. to try to guide our children's careers. Mm -hmm. We'll say, I want you to be a doctor. Yeah. And you might not have that uh, passion, not only passion, but the skill set to mm. be a doctor. Good. Um, but your parents want you to be a doctor. They want you to live their dream. Live their dream. And then you leave that dream being mm -hmm. very unhappy the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Unhappy. Yeah. Because you don't want to let them down. But yes. then they are so proud of you. Look, my son is a doctor. My daughter is doctor. a lawyer. Hey, lawyer. But you're so miserable. Mm -hmm. And you, you're suppressing this Gifts. passion and, 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 and talent you mm -hmm. already have. Mm -hmm. And uh, Margaret, I'm so proud of Margaret because she's living her, her dream. dream that I'm an accountant. I never knew that I'll be an accountant. But yeah. Margaret knew she, she loved cooking. Yeah. Would you say you're living your dream also? No, no, no. This is not mm. what I dreamt to do. Mm. But I'm, 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 I'm living. Mm. Uh, I, I have a, a, a career that I enjoy. Yeah. You see, a dream is you, you know, from, you know, probably you've been, uh, uh, most people who are very creative or who have this passion for something, probably you guided in a certain way, you'll mm -hmm. have that. Probably you've seen somebody a very young, I want to be like that. Yeah. I didn't have that. Mm. So my one, as I told you, there's a lady called Miss Lin who thought that I could be an accountant. Yeah. And, I, and I thought the spark went out. Oh, I then that's what I'm doing there. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do that mm -hmm. now, you know. So I put all my effort, I started reading, <coughs> studying. Mm -hmm. Since this guy, person has said that I could be a, an accountant, yeah. that's what I'm going to be going there. To do. Yeah, and, but a lot of the time, some of us need that kind of push. Identify that you're good at something. Yes. And you carry on, you do it. And you carry on and you do it, huh? Yeah. How is life? Do you ever think of coming back home? I go home all the time. No. It's living back. Oh, coming 100%. to live in Kenya. hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, I I have made conscious efforts. I mean, I've failed in some businesses mm -hmm. doing in Kenya mm -hmm. where, you know, this this is what makes it really, really bad because mm -hmm. a lot of us want to invest in Kenya. Yes. But you have people back home who take shortcuts. Mm -hmm. I had employed a lot of people in Kenya in a business that I was mm -hmm. doing, which is we worked with um, EBL and distribution to finance small bars with the small uh, with stock, the pairs, and yeah. they decided to run down my business. It, I don't know how they do it in Kenya, but I, I lost a lot of money, and which is really really unfortunate because mm -hmm. some of us who want to do more. To, to to and to yeah. come back home yeah. and then you have you're thinking why 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 this shortcut mm. so i eventually want to come over yeah. there but i have to rebuild you just brought it out you have to rebuild <laughs> <laughs> good one for that you have to rebuild 100 percent. because yes. the thing is you know when like i'm kenyan so i've got to go back home mm. this is we hear and then this is it's, it's nice, but I tell my kids as well, you know, home is best. Home you know, we need best. to do, and we go home all the time. Yeah, all, all the all the yeah, time. Yeah. But uh, this uh, tremendous opportunities at uh, home, mm. but we have a lot of people who want shortcuts. Yeah, and for me, I left Kenya when I was only twenty years old. Yes. So when I see people taking shortcuts, there's no shortcuts in life. You'll be found out if you take shortcuts, 100%. 100%. Anyone that is investing back home, what do you tell them? What are your number two tips you would give anyone, especially living here in diaspora, that wants to invest back home? First, be present in everything you do because people take shortcuts. Because exactly. I, I would be present and... People used to say, you know, you need to have somebody you trust at home. Mm -hmm. I really don't trust anyone at home to do my investments. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. 
and maybe somebody knows somebody who mm. they can trust to mm. do things for mm. them. When you do something, do it well and have a presence there, you know, because for whatever reason, back home, we just have this appetite to take like and broke things. Yeah, cut, cut, you know, like <laughs> Yeah, and they, like <laughs> someone tells <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> I know, like, like, Lynn, like someone will say, ah, you know, I s probably saw me with you. It's like, oh, I'm Lynn's friend, yes. you know. You can get this thing done, you know, like just for whatever, give me this. Give me this. I'll hook you up. Hundred percent. And there's so many, and you hear this, and I'm like, my goodness. Mm -hmm. you, just because you took a picture with yeah. Lynn, now you're Lynn's friend. Yes. And it happens so much. Someone, and it happens. Yeah. See, it's me with Lynn, it's, we're very close. Yeah. You want this done? I'll get it done for you. There are no shortcuts in mm -hmm. life. At all. At all. I'm an accountant. Yeah. You cannot take shortcuts in F life. Facts. I can sh you'll be found out. Mm -hmm. Regardless what you do. You'll even if you out. take money from somebody. Money you haven't worked hard for, you'll, you'll still, waste it. And you'll still, you'll, you won't even enjoy it. You'll waste it. Yeah. Have you ever seen people who win lotteries? Mm. Where do what they normally end up? What of them? Where do they normally end up? Oh my God, sad cases. You didn't work for that money, did you? How can you know how to use it? If you've made money the right way, you've got money the right way, yeah. you'll know, even when you lose it, you can always get it back. Yeah. I have a skill, you've got a skill, your skill will still pay you. Mm. Regardless whether you, oh, COVID came and you lost everything, Yes. your skill will still pay, pay you. you. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, um, the perceptions people have at home, especially for people who work in diaspora, where do you think we get it wrong back at home about you guys in diaspora? Oh, that we have money, like it's just on <laughs> trees. They go around, pick it up. They come around and they say, I've got this. They always have, send me money for this. Send me money for this. I don't know, there's a school fees, mm. there's a funeral, mm. there's medical. Mm. But if you tell the same person, put money into um, um, an insurance mm. to pay for your funeral or mm. to pay for your medical, yes. to pay for your school fees, yes. they don't want to. But yeah. right now I do know that there's uh, a fund for school fees, mm. there's a fund for medical, there's a fund for uh, yes. funerals. Yes. But we don't do it. Yeah. So somebody calls you and it's like, I need, it's always an emergency actually. I need it now. Like you got money, like just plugged Send away there to, to give it. Hey, hey. Need, I need to give you hey. 100 Gs, you hey. know. So nipe, okay. nipe yeah. And, and, and when, you, when you say you don't have, they don't they even want to know. They, in fact, become very offended. And they don't even talk to you anymore. 100%. Yeah. I've seen it. And it's everywhere. Mm. Oh. And, and if, if they find you, it's like, you remember me? I used to do this for you. For you? Nilipe, bro. You know, and we see all these kind of things. Yeah. But, you know, when uh, as a business person over here, I know how to create opportunities that earn, yes. can earn money, yeah. you know, because you, you can't print money. You can't make money. The government makes can print money faster yeah. than you can. Yeah. But when you have, <laughs> it does. Yeah, so. If people say you can make money, you can't. Even though we assume we can make money, yeah. but you can't. Yeah. Because the government makes money, prints it quicker, mm. and there's too much available for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it available for everybody. Yes. You just have to figure out how mm. to get it. How to get it? Eh? Yeah. Let me ask you, what do you think is the greatest lesson life has taught you? There are a couple of things. Consistency. Mm. Opportunity. Mm -hmm. Hard work. Yeah. A commitment. Yes. I was telling Lawrence that I was quite chubby when I came to England. I was yes. very, very fat. Yeah. And I made a conscious decision that I wanted to, um, I didn't like the way I looked. Mm. So I 
decided that I, I will buy shoes, trainers, and run. Mm. And I saw people playing football, and mm. I was started playing football. Yeah. If you see anyone who is disciplined, that mm. person has a lot of, uh, you know, you cannot deviate. You have to do things the right way. There are certain things that are ingredients in life. Hard work, commitment. But you have to work smarter, though. But commitment, discipline. Mm -hmm. Look, the time that it takes, you know, but you're so committed to what you do. Oh. You're so disciplined. You know, you're very hard working. Mm. You look at all these ingredients, and those, those sort of things are in everybody who, yes. is, who is successful. Yeah. There are no shortcuts. You remember I told you? Yes. And it's in all of us. It's all of us. And I see it in Margaret. Mm. Like, I see how committed, how disciplined she is, yeah. how hardworking she is, how um, uh, creative she is, mm. you know, how passionate she is. You see, even how you have... How driven she is. She's so driven. And you are. Thank and you. all those kind of ingredients are yes. like in all success. Look Thank at the you. timing. And... Mm. You still, and somebody sleeping and thinking, I'll wake up and somebody will give me money. Who can I borrow? Let me ask Lynn for 10,000 shillings. Say. Yeah, but you tell, you know, come and work for me nine at nine, this time. Nine nine usiku, yeah. And we are still here. Exactly. Yeah. Na na kwambia, ay, yo nisa, ay, pana. Mm. But in to me, a pesa. Nisa idea. Na uspo msaidia na kwa tena shida. Oh, Anafura. nilimuonga 10,000 tu peke yake na kwa nisaidia. Haka nyima. Haka nyima. Anafura. Mm -hmm. Saizi unafanya kazi. Ya, yeah. kibarua. Hey, leo ija kuwa raisi. Kwaza leo ija kuwa raisi. But yeah, do you love it here? I love it in, I love it in England. Mm. Really, really. Like, and I've traveled a great deal, you know, in Europe and, you know, but England is so, the systems that work, mm. that even in America don't work. Um, here, I think, i tell you something, you know, yeah. I, have, I was talking to somebody just mm -hmm. very quickly. I was it's talking okay. to somebody, this guy has spent 15,000 pounds to come over here. Yeah. And they got here, they want to do care work. Uh, so to do this care work, you get paid minimum wage, which is ten pounds forty-two, right? In a year, it's about twenty-one thousand six hundred pounds. You cannot live on this money, and this is the the, the problem a lot of Kenyans have. Is mm. like ten pounds an hour. That's a lot. That's a lot. You've been here. Hey, that's nothing. But you convert this money over there and you're thinking, well, you don't live there. Yes. It's impossible, and I mean impossible, to save 15000 a year on 21600 You can't. It's impossible in five years to save that kind of money. It's impossible if you're on minimum wage. It's wow. impossible in 10 years to save that kind of money. Wow. So if you tell this person, why don't you go to college, get a skill set, Invest this money, get a skill set, wow. probably 5,000. Take that 10,000. Get a job that will get you this money. You've already saved 10,000. Spend 5,000. Mm. Like in Kenya, do nothing, whatever. Yes. You won't finish it. Yeah. You have this still 10,000. And you can be probably a paramedic or something. You, you can save this money, mm. 15,000. Why put it where you have to do Work mm. that you can never truly even afford the home over here you live. I never looked at it that way. Damn. Yeah. Invest in a skill. A skill pays. Invest in a skill. Yeah, a skill pays. Skill pays. Don't say, ah, I'll do anything. Mm. What is no, anything? No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Mm. Invest in a skill. Mm. A skill. This guy is a cameraman over here. He's skilled. He knows a lot about this camera. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. skill. He's mm -hmm. invested in it. Mm -hmm. Can't just tell or do anything. You know, okay, you do anything, go do. figure it out. Mm. Oh, I can't. A skill pays. Invest yeah. in a skill 
and you'll be paid. And you'll be paid. 100%. Maybe for the men who are out there, sometimes they don't know if they are dads, and then you also find out your dad. I know you said, you know, if you can't take care of your kid, but to those who maybe also have no idea, and some women also choose uh, intentionally not to tell a man that he's a father, what would you want to say about that? Uh, I think this is a really great question, uh, Lynn, yeah. because what happens is you never ever know what the future of this person holds. If you are told you have a, a father, um, probably nowadays this technology to find out whether that's your child, mm -hmm. because a lot of the times, you know, sometimes someone might see, oh, you know, it's Ken on television, Ken lives in London, mm -hmm. oh, I'll just say this is your kid. Mm -hmm. So now I need to prove it is mm. my kid. But generally the technologies out there, do it, if it's your kid, mm. take, take responsibility it. because yeah. you never know how this kid will turn up. Yes. Yeah. And Margaret is a prime example of how wonderful she is. And she's a wonderful girl. Mm. I took that leap and I helped Margaret. But a lot of the, you guys who go out and you have children and you say, well, oh, it was your fault. Oh, so you know, you, it's just your fault. Yeah. You deal with it. Yeah. You never know how it might turn out. Mm -hmm. I give you something, I tell you something. My uncle who told me to leave the home where I was leaving my grandma because thought probably, oh, you know, I need a shamba mm -hmm. or something. Left, I left, I went over the other side only to find that actually my grandmother knew of me and mm. wanted me. Mm. And he came la years later to my house and said, oh, Ken, Do you remember you chased me from the home? You told me to go? Because you never thought that I'll be who I am. But right now you see me. And now you're coming around that mm. I need to help you. Mm. Because you chased me. Literally chased me from the home. And there are a lot of fathers out there who chase their kids, go and then enter. enter. You don't quite know how this kid is going to turn up. Mm. And God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. and, and the kid comes and says, like, oh, it's my kid. I'm so proud, proud of, you. of you. You've made it. Now we need to create some stuff. You cannot be a father. And this is a figure out living over here. Mm. After the age of 14, it's really difficult to bond with the kid. Because they've already formed relationships. Mm. What is it you're going to tell them? Nothing much. And I'm pretty sure if I came into Margaret's life at the age of 17, she's gone. She probably doesn't even want to have anything to do with me. But I, it was early. Mm. And Margaret was yearning for this father figure. And I was yearning for the to make a difference, the connection. Because mm. that's the kind of like mm. the connection. And a lot of people leave it. After the age of 14, for fathers who leave their kids and they come into their lives mm. after 14, it's really difficult. Mm. Even right now, if you and you come into your father's life at the age of 17 and he tells you, oh, I don't want you smoking, drinking, mm. you think you're going to listen? No, as who? Who are you? Yeah. But earlier on, make a difference in being your kid's life. Mm. Make a difference in their life. Yeah. Even after 14, if you're not, mm. that kid has already established a mm. connection with you. Yeah. Yeah. And don't ever think that, oh, because right now you've got money, whatever. Mm. As we age, our kids then come up mm. and they look forward to helping you. Mm. Like, I can assure you, like Margaret today, um, if Margaret goes on holiday, she always does now. She travels. She has a business. She, mm -hmm. She's very well traveled now. She goes like mm -hmm. weekend. She will go with her yeah. friends. She'll be like, Dad, I've made these meals for you. Aww. Even five days, Margaret goes. She'll be like, these are your meals for the week. Yeah. You know, so when I come home because I live with her or this is, yes. you know, whatever. I come home, my house is we live together, the house is clean and she's, Margaret is very clean and I everything noticed. has to be organized. Yes. Dad, we need to do this. If 
I can assure you, mm -hmm. if I was not a good part, Margaret will not even want to live with me. True. Wouldn't want to make sure that I'm all taken care yes, of. And, you have your meals ready. And all my other, all her siblings, mm. you know, my yeah. son mm. and, and Christine, that mm. everybody is taken. Margaret yeah. is just, she's, she's really, really good. She's really good. Huh? And a lot of us, like, just like you, probably oh. you do the same for you for your loved ones yes. because they played a role in your life. In your life. Probably your sister, your mother, you, they played a mm. role in your life and mm. whatever you do. But if they were not, you'll say, you know, go and your and way. And when you know, and, uh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. But and I, I just and want... to the women who don't like telling fathers that they have kids. It's really, really sad. It really, really is because I'm a victim of that as mm. well. My father, my father didn't probably know that my mother uh, of, of this, but probably he knew I will never know mm. because my father died, my mother died, yeah. I'm an orphan as well. Wow. But none of them played a role in bringing me up and none of them can ever say that, oh, you know, I was with them. No, yeah. my grandmother's made me who I am. And my auntie, Auntie Agnes, who took me in from the village because... Warungai? Yeah. Yes. Uh, had it not been for, her, been for her, taking me from the village, I would never have had the opportunity mm. to come to England. Mm. Living in the village, which is really, really far. Yeah. To bring me to the village, regardless whether I didn't study for mm. a year, I always give props because she stayed with me. Yeah. She helped me a great deal. And I will forever be grateful to her Beautiful. because she took me in when I didn't have, uh, my grandmother was like, I'm here with this boy. Can mm. you take him? Mm. Maybe there's an opportunity over there. Beautiful. And like, and Auntie Agnes, I appreciate. Yeah. Good. You know. I want you to look at that camera and talk to Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, I'm so very proud of you. You've made not only me, but our entire family. You put us on the map. We are so proud of you. And uh, all the dedication, the hard work, the commitment, the creativity you have, uh, you make us all very proud. I know like Kenneth, Christine loves you very much. And, you know, you see how Kenneth is looking up, you know, to you, comes to the kitchen. And you inspire so many, many, many girls who come to the restaurant that, can I have Margaret? Is Margaret over here? Can you talk to my kids? And people come to the restaurant, it's like, is wow. Margaret there? Wow. Just talk to our kids, you know, like, they just want to be like you. They see you on Instagram, on, on your Facebook, on, on, on Twitter when you do exercises mm -hmm. and everybody wants is so inspired by you and keep it keep it up but yes. we're so i'm so proud of you yeah you m made me so happy and i have zero regrets in yeah. being in your life you what do you want to tell yourself i'm so happy that uh having uh kids you know with having my kids in my life i'm so proud of you you know uh, i'm creating something that for all of us, mm. uh, our life is good. As you can see, our life is good. <laughs> 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 and uh, and we'll be good. Yes. We'll be good. And thank you so much for loving me. My mm. kids love me a lot. All of them love me a lot. And I'm so super happy okay. to have my kids all together. Mm. I, you know, we can see we all together. Uh, my daughter has just come back from Brazil oh. to study and she was away in Peru and Brazil. Margaret has been doing her travels and work and my son is studying. She, he was really good at Mandarin mm -hmm. and they changed. Mm -hmm. can speak Chinese very well. Yeah. Now he's doing French and yeah. I'm so happy for you, yeah. uh, my, my kids. Yeah, oh. my, my life is good. My it's life. good. The joy of a father. <laughs> I am so proud. I'm a very proud father. Good, and you should be. And you should be. It's been a long journey also for you. It's been a yeah. long journey. And you deserve to smile. I thank you so much. Regardless of what has happened along yeah. the way, yeah. you deserve to smile, you know. 
and thank you for holding her hand and i'm pretty sure you are doing that to the rest of your kids that is christine and kenneth yes if christine, i'm not wrong christine and kenneth yeah, yeah christine and kenneth so just continue holding them and just knowing that they love you because margaret speaks very highly of you you know as we were doing the interview and yeah. at some point she got emotional and she was like daddy help me you know yeah, yeah. I, I really felt that part you know yeah. and you've done a good job thank you you've thank done you. the best you could have done i have done as the a best, father yeah. Yeah. and you should be proud of yourself thank so you. pat yourself you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you so part, much part you know. yourself you know and may god just bless you and yeah, may he you. restore whatever it is that you've lost also yeah. you know now and the let go go bless yeah thank yeah, you i see a beautiful person in front of me i see someone who was just didn't know things and when yeah. he knew the truth he also you 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 stood up as a man and you said i have to do this oh yeah and that's for me that's the respect i accord you Thank the you. fact that you stood in the gap and you said oni wangu aya i'll margaret, take it from there thank you so much yeah, yeah. margaret margaret made me um made me a, a, a man to yeah. be honest because Good. made me and being a girl you know mm. protective and and kind of like she played football she went yeah. dancing yes. she went golf and cycling she learned yeah. how to cycle i yeah. bought her bike you know yeah. all these things you teach kids you yes. know and you know even having a first drink i told margaret because the society can teach you a yes. lot so i said margaret it's a glass of wine over here pick it up come now you're having a drink at hey, the age of together four. hey at the age of 16 i said you you take one so i didn't quite want the society to teach her how to do this you taught her oh yeah i told her you take and she doesn't drink that yes, much yes very little i don't want mm. same thing with christine mm. because if you don't the society will teach her the kids Good. will be like let's go party let's go party and the society will teach her tell you them know? the mm. kind of like even smoking mm. you know it's no good yes it's bad for your life and all these things because yeah. as parents we don't talk certain things even no. relationship wise mm -hmm. with the, with our kids mm -mm. you know so i told her i had you when i was uh, you know 15 16 when i was 16 i don't want to come here and like uh, you got a you got a you got a kid mm. you know at 14 15 yeah, yeah. Get, which can happen because mm -hmm. we're not talking about these things yes, with our kids because we are not being open and yeah. transparent yeah, yeah um, i know a lot of parents have learned from you today this conversation was bound to happen <laughs> and you'll just see it also on the comment section yeah. huh? the kind of things that they've learned are from you but other than that anyone who wants maybe to get hold of you how can they do it is there an email are you on instagram are you on tiktok nope. are you on tinder no. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 none no, of no. those i'm not on social media at, at, all, all, at, at all, all at all at all at yes, all not yes. on social media yeah, so wanitafute oh i wakutafute wanitafute wewe we utanipata mimi nitakupata wewe utanipata tu but uh, siko si kwa social yeah asante sana yeah. london has been good to us and my team we've done our job we came we saw we conquered that's what i would say god has been gracious yeah, yeah, and i hope i can also come back next year but we have a pending dinner at yeah. kenya kitchen on which sunday. on sunday I'll so be there. i'm gonna see you there sante yes. shall we wind up yeah sante sana chaniambia watu wangu kwa heri msema wanitafute wewe wewe goja nitakunta kufawadia but anyways what do you know that i don't know i don't know what do you think i know that you did not tell me but anyways anyways my people are santeni sana oh what a day i feel like just clapping for ourselves today cuz hey we did it my people we did it We did yeah. it. We did uh, 100%. it. Yes, we well did done. it. Hapa. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Santenis. man. It's not been easy but we did it. Yeah. And guys, I I say it takes a community to build what we've built here. We go through what we have to go through to bring you this content 
and you show us support by just sharing and letting us know how the rebuilding series especially has been inspirational for you. And to anyone out there, for me, Margaret's story, to be honest, was it reminded me why I do what I do. Sometimes it's just a vessel of sitting and let someone become, let someone just pour it all because they found a safe space uh, to be themselves. So, Sante Nisana for watching and I'm happy that you've had to listen to the dad's part or side of the story. An amazing human we met last year, met him this year and probably next, Lydia tunakuja next year? Lazima, yes. So, and probably next year when I see you guys again. And I don't know what time you are watching this or how many episodes you've watched from our London series. But for me, I've been challenged. And guys, your gift has no borders. It has no limits. Stop listening to people who want to box you and put you in a place that they think you should not come out. Come, even as a creative, come out, explore, learn how other people are doing things and not, don't just be scared at all, you know. And don't worry, people will hold your hands no matter what. Stop worrying about these small things like where will the money come from when an opportunity meets preparation. Nothing is impossible. And also to our incredible partners at uh, High Soap Properties Limited. Hatuwezi fanya ikazi without financial support. So when I partner with such people, it really makes me happy. So if you're looking into investing in anything, matters, Rista uliza dada kona ikas ngapi yuko home za mashamba. Maybe tongi anaeka ando ni muambia ni saidie na eka. Since hapa ni miona pesa, they grow on trees. So nifunie tu zangu miendange nazo home. But if you're looking into investing in a company, Company, uh, matters land and also development check isop uh, properties limited and also to say thank you to my incredible team muga joshua liz sijui lawrence ametoka side gani leo but what's up akakula kebab peke yake <laughs> and also to lydia tet olet for organizing this and just making sure that we've had an incredible trip rebuild restore have faith that you can always pick up from where you left on and don't be scared of trying many people who have have the talent as you are doing magical things because they have believed in themselves unafanya nini believe in yourself my and also when you fall fall and rise up fall and rise up fall and, and rise up sinisawa i'm gonna see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hopefully our next trip is in the U.S., God willingly. So to say, Menini, it can only be God. See you. Bye-bye.